Welcome to Moon Harbor Heroes. Today's issue is Storyteller Issue 8, Bacchanal. On the cover, Vanessa and Diane face off. Vanessa is shooting a hex at Diane, who is floating in glowing gold. In the background, Edwin crouches over a dark figure, blood on his mouth. Perdu stands to the side with a stag's head atop of his. The cover is bordered with a Greek meandrous pattern. We turn the page and our story begins. On the first page of this issue, just inside the cover, there is an editor's note. This arc contains graphic imagery, violence, and substance abuse. The issue begins in the storyteller's study once more, though it has been slightly rearranged. His typically messy desk is covered in a tablecloth, with candles and trays of food. He sits, tapping his fingers impatiently. He glances at a clock, then looks at the reader, saying, The clock's nearing midnight, and we're on the edge. Has Diane finally gone over the ledge against Vanessa and Perdue? And yes, Edwin, too. This dance is sure to be quite the to-do. A Cupid and Aphrodite still to crown, announcing our winners in tux and in gown. Who will it be? Who will win it all? We'll find out in this issue, Bacchanal. He stands in paces, looking towards the door. He then goes to a bookshelf and pulls out a comic, holding it up to the firelight, revealing that it has the same cover as our issue. He flips it open and our story begins. Uh, so we're gonna smash cut back to the dance floor and the as you guys exit the music like gradually comes to a halt and we see Katarina uh, taking the mic from the DJ. All right everyone it's time to announce our Valentine's Cupid and Aphrodite and we we see the crowd like cheering but it's it's very weird cheering since everybody is so messed up. As this is happening I want a moment where I like try to like reach out psychically uh, Geese into the abyss and just like make sure that all my people are ready. Okay, that is roll with dark. Oof, my dark is a minus one, so I need this to go well. That did not go well, that was a six. Amazing. How does it look when you are trying to gaze into the abyss? I think I'm like standing on the edge of the crowd, like everyone's cheering, and like my eyes blink, and all of a sudden the entire room is gold. And we see, like, slow motion, almost, like, echolocation style of me, like, scanning the room and making sure all my people are ready. And I think that we see two of the three people in place. We see uh, Theo and Buck in place, but I think May is not. And I want to, like, snap at May and spend my string on her to move that up to a seven. Okay. And be like, you were supposed to be there right now. God, you are useless. I don't even know why I keep you around. The abyss shows you confusing and alarming visions, but you get your answer nonetheless. I think that I see that, like, everyone is in place, but it's, like, something is going to go really hideously wrong, and I see that, like, my future self, like, something bad is going to happen, but I don't know what it is. I just see, like, the entire room covered in red and lots of really dark, like, lots of darkness. Normally, like, all my magic stuff is gold and color, but this is all, like, red and black. Yeah, I think you are, you are filled with, like, this overwhelming sense of dread. Cool. And so we go back up to the DJ's booth where Katarina is ready to announce our Cupid and Aphrodite. So if I call your name, come on up. And she like holds two crowns in her hands. And I have a present for you. So first, let's go with our Cupid. And she like holds up like the box and shakes it a bit and like shakes it uh, kind of teasingly. Our Cupid this year is Purdue. I just blankly stare in front of me. Purdue, come on up and get your crown. I just stalk up to the stage. I'm looking very uncomfortable. Oh, excellent. Uh, Katarina comes over and like flirtingly puts the, the crown on your head and then turns back to the crowd. And for our Aphrodite, and I think like for drama's sake, we absolutely getting her sharing a look with Diane. Vanessa, come on up. So what I will do is I will take Edwin by the hand and I will kiss him on the back of his hand as I part and I will head up to the stairs and up onto the stage. Katarina goes and, uh, and places the crown on your head. Can we get a big round of applause for our Cupid and Aphrodite? And with that, I want to signal to my uh, gang to do what we discussed. Um, we see that May is on the floor and she's like the person who does like the signaling and she signals up to Theo and Buck who are in the catwalks of the like stage above you all. They like pull a like large rope 
you know Carrie when it rains buckets of pig's blood? This yep. is when I step forward. Um, I mean, oh, boy. Animals were just slaughtered, like goats and stags and such. It starts raining their body parts down. So for this, I'm going to have you lash out physically. Because, like, even though you are not the one, like, physically doing this, you you did set this in motion. I'm going to use a string on Purdue because this is an attack directly against him. Okay. So I'm going to use my string, and I've got my gang involved. So this is a 2d6 plus 2. Cool. Yeah, and it's rolling one. with Volatile. That is a 9. So on a 7 to 9, you harm them, but choose one. I think I'm going to decide how, you can decide how bad the harm turns out. I would become my darker self, but I already am. Though part of me thinks I, like, go, like, full goddess and, like, turn gold and glimmering and fly up in the air and, like, lose all of my humanity. I think letting me decide how bad the, the harm turns out. Before we resolve this, um, when I see the bucket starting to fall, can I try to run and, like, just tackle Vanessa out of the way? Yeah. Hell yeah. I think that would be a keep your cool. Okay. And I think I'll get a plus one to this because I think this is in pursuit of my hunger of Vanessa. Yes. And this is rolling with cold. Hell yeah. That's a 10. Nice. Uh, you keep your cool and gain insight and you can ask me a question. Who did this? I think this is when, Diane, you said you were like rising above and like your full darkest self. Yeah, I think I'm like glowing gold at this point. Excellent. So I think as you do this, like you, you look out and you see Diane rising above the crowd glowing. And it's okay, cool. fairly clear who did this. <laughs> to resolve the harm. So Edwin just tackled Vanessa out of the way. Um, but considering that there's still a lot falling, falling down, um, both of you take one harm. I think I think you guys get hit with like, smaller body parts that are more of just like gonna cause bruises. Um, do you want me to take harm as well? Yes, because you got in the way. Cool. Purdue, you get hit with... Diane, what animals did you say that have been slaughtered? I referenced goats and stags specifically. Excellent. So I think, Purdue, you get hit with a stag's head. And I think you get impaled through the arm with the antler. And I'm going to have you take three harm. So I'm standing in the middle of the stage and Vanessa gets tackled out of the way. So I'm just the only one standing there as the body parts rain down and pierce me in the arm. The next scene in the movie is this scene in this small French village. And uh, there's a very young Purdue sitting by the side of the street. And people are shouting at him and throwing stuff at him. And then the next scene you see is just the local graveyard and just an unmarked grave. This whole ordeal has brought back traumas from my old village. So I gained the condition traumatized. And I now treat everyone um, as though they're at fault for my dad. Excellent. And I'm guessing you're probably going to collapse at this point. Um, you just suffered a lot of harm. Yeah, that would be a good guess. That would be a good guess. Cool. Um, and just to resolve something with the gang, um, there was a plus one two harm so Vanessa and Edwin uh, took two harm and since the two of you were not stabbed with an antler I'm going to give you guys the first chance to react so definitely there's going to be witch battle happening here but what I'm thinking right now is I want to because I I have to meet the target's gaze to cast a hex would I be able to hex the whole room on the basis that everyone is probably staring straight at me right now, or a large enough proportion of people, that it won't be an issue if I'm missing a few stragglers? I'm so cool with this. <laughs> oh, yes. So my, my hex says that I have no control over the exact images or manifestations, so some of this is going to be down to MC interpretation. What I want to accomplish is everyone seeing Diane as this typical stag-headed satanic monster, as is only appropriate since she's dropped a ton of stag heads on everyone. Ha oh, and I might end up not having as much control over this as I like, but that's my goal I have in mind. So you're trying to get them to see Diane as a monster? It's effectively, yes. Excellent. 
they see me with like massive like goat horns instead of like a stag's head that like works as well traditional like satan-y yeah imagery. any variation on this theme is okay with me Perfect. i'm so cool with that and for side effect so we see the crowd like they they're staring at you and as you do this I think this is when they like really first start to notice that Diane has risen above them glowing and with goat horns. And it's fairly easy to draw some conclusions about what has just caused all of these animal parts to rain down from the ceiling. Mm. And so they just start like scattering, like they are heading for the doors. They are trying to get out of here. So Diane, what do you do right now? I think we're about to get full witch battle, which is going to be fun because I don't have Hex, but I can lash out physically. <laughs> uh, but I think I see her, like, there, and I just want to, like, essentially grab, like, a goat horn or, like, a goat head from the stage and just, like, fling it mentally at her. Just straight up lash out physically at Vanessa. Excellent. Roll with Volatile. And I don't, my gang can help me, and I don't have a string on her, so this is just a flat 2d6. Yeah, they're up in the catwalks right now, so it'll take a while to get back down. Ooh. Thank God. Cool. I think you just straight up miss. Uh, can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Can I hit Katarina and kill her? <laughs> Oof. <laughs> I, I don't think you kill her, but you hit her and we see her go down and then we see her pop back up and she looks very different. Her skin has turned to scales and her tongue is like hissing out of her out of her mouth. And she's she looks significantly more like a snake than she did before. Phenomenal. And I'm gonna call my gang down and be like, uh, just like yell and be like, everyone battle positions now and make them all just get ready to fight. Cool. It's gonna take them some time to get down there. Purdue, you just took three harm, which will need serious medical condition, like serious medical so, treatment. When Diane slammed me into the wall earlier, didn't I get a harm then too? You did, yeah. Sweet. So yeah, you're at four harm. Yeah, which uh, which means that I'm going to skirt that, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm going to become my darkest self. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Oh my god, tell us about your your darkest self. <laughs> Let's get three darkest selves out of four. <laughs> you become invisible, unnoticeable. No one can see you, feel you, or hear your voice. You can still affect inanimate objects, but this is your only avenue of communication. You escape your darkest self when someone acknowledges your presence and demonstrates how much they want you around. So I think you are you're visible when you get hit and people can see you getting hit with this antler. And I think you you disappear once people's attention is drawn towards the witch battle. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Purdue, you are now invisible. What do you do? Can I toss out an idea for the visual just for the transition scene? Oh yeah. Like it cuts from the witch battle back to where Purdue was like laying in this bloody heap and Purdue's gone, but we just see these footprints in the blood. Ooh. Nice. Mm. I think at this point, all of the body parts that are scattered around on the stage, they start vibrating and moving, and they form up into this bloody stack, and it just stands there. I think that would take you a little bit to arrange, since you've got to like physically pick them all up. It's fine if it's, if this takes most of the battle. Like, I'm not trying to do anything with it. I just want the bloody stack. Okay, I want to jump over to um, to Edwin. What are you doing? As the only character here who is not in their darkest self. Oh, and I'm not holding myself together well. I don't know what the most exciting thing that's happening is at this point. Do you, wanna, do you want us to come back to you? Uh, yeah, give me a sec. Okay, let's go to Vanessa. Okay, so... Knowing things are about to go violent, I will continue with my original line of thought. Diane's gang is still coming down, so they wouldn't be there for me to make eye contact with, right? No, they're they're not here. And I I think by this point they've left the catwalk, so they're they're coming back downstairs. Okay, just confirming. So I'm going to throw another hex at Diane's direction. If this works, it is going to be binding. This person cannot physically harm others whatsoever. 
Cool. Go ahead and roll your move. There we go. Excellent. It's still going to have side effects because you're in your darkest self. Is there a visual to this? Like, is uh, like Diane wrapped up in something? How are how 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 do you visually bind her? Knowing that Wither is a hex that I could do, but don't currently have access to, I'm imagining that it's an enfeebling that whenever she tries to bring herself to fight, she just loses all strength. Perhaps her skin starts turning grey and beginning to rot, and that each time she stops, it ends, but she can't muster the energy to raise her hand against someone in anger. Cool. And I think your side effect is Diane knows exactly what you just did. That's fair. Neither of us are being subtle at this point. Cool. And Edwin, are you ready or should we go to Diane? I think seeing what's going on and like seeing Diane's crew starting to head down from the catwalks, I'm going to meet them. Yeah, so that'll probably be like at the at the door to the the gym. I think that'll happen like next next go round. Perfect. They have a few stories to come down. So, Diane, Vanessa just texted you. What do you do? I think I want to like fly over and land on the stage. And I've got my my gang members there. My three gang members. They're still coming down. How close are? They? Ed- Edwin's going to be inter- intercepting them at the door. Great. I'm going to turn to Edwin and be like, Edwin, come away from that ladder now. Are you, do you still have strings on me? I have one more string on you. I am not trying to tempt you. I'm just commanding at you. Then I just ignore you and continue. I'm not hungry for you. You're right. (laughs) I'm going to look up at, I think Buck is the first one on the ladder coming down. And May was on the ground with me. So May is probably like climbing the stairs to come up on stage. She's probably, like, closer than anyone else is. And I want to spend one of my strings on Buck to give him the condition of unhinged. Buck, as I mentioned, was, um, he, quote, resembles a bull in more ways than one. Buck is a minotaur, but has been, like, held back. Excellent. I was hoping for that. (laughs) I want to release the minotaur part of him. So he's going to, like, leap down from the, like, half a story up where he is in the ladder as a full minotaur. Cool. I think uh, visually we we see him drop down from the ladder and the floor kind of caves in like a little bit because like he just came down and I'm sure he is heavy. And Edwin, you were trying to intercept him. So what do you do? Is he coming right at me? Oh yeah, he's coming right at you. I mean, well, did were you standing directly under the ladder? My plan was to try and shake the ladder and knock him off. So yeah, probably. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> is there a like fire extinguisher on the wall I can grab to swing? Well, you're definitely taking uh, a harm since he landed on you. That's fair. Since he's working with me, can I use my uh, next string to add one to the harm that I'm dealing since I'm dealing it through Buck? Does that bring you up to four harm? That brings him up to four harm. It does. Cool. Are you going to try to skirt death? Or accepting it. I I mean, I think I have to skirt death to become my darkest self. Oh my god. Of course. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Can I set what this looks like after I read this? Yep, go ahead and read it. <laughs> uh, your dull hunger sharpens. You can't focus on anything else but feeding. In addition to your pe- peculiar cravings, you recognize something else. That primordial hunger which connects all hungers. Flesh, blood, meat. You escape your do- darkest self once you've overindulged or if you've been locked locked out long enough to regain composure. Oh, boy. So I think we get the panels of him, like, falling on me and maybe just beating the shit out of me, and I just go still. And then as Buck starts to get up off of me, I just latch my mouth onto his leg and just take a big old bite. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think my eyes at this point are just purely red bloodshot. Oof. Vanessa, did you see that? Were you watching or were you paying more attention to Diane? Both options are really tempting. Oh, I think I might be my paying more di- attention to Diane at this point, to be fair. Okay. Edwin, Buck like cries out, turns to like look at his leg and then look at you and just shouts, What the fuck, dude? I'm gonna come at him as hard as I can. <laughs> he looks okay. really tasty. <laughs> Flash out physically. 
he is the most delicious looking <laughs> thing this in this room until I look at Vanessa. And I haven't looked at Vanessa yet, so. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's rolling with volatile. Uh, hey, I'm good at that. So this pursues one of my hungers, so. It's a nine? Yep. So on a seven to nine, you harm them, but choose one. Uh, you decide how bad the harm turns out. So how exactly are you attacking him? Nails and teeth. Excellent. Just like a feral animal at this point. You tackle him, and he's a he's a really big guy, but he's really surprised by this, and like just by you. And honestly, I I think you kill him. That's fair. I think we could just get like him screaming. Our next scene is me with a lot of his blood on him. Yeah, we could just see you like hunched over, hunched over him. Cool. Diane, were you watching this? No, I'm just facing off against Vanessa right now. Sweet. Let's go back to that. So, Vanessa, what do you do? So, at this point, knowing that Vanessa isn't much in a fight, but Edwin is, I am going to try and grab Diane by the neck and drag her straight over to Edwin. And I am going to try and leverage Diane's paranoia, try to throw her off her game, and I'm going to be graphically describing what I imagine Edwin will do to her. Okay. Diane, what is your reaction to that? Are you fighting back against that? I'm just trying to break out of this grip right now. That sounds like I keep your cool. Cool. I think I saw, as I like a turn around, I see like Buck's very, very deceased corpse. And I'm like, oh god, oh no. Oh, God. And I'm, like, trying to get away so Edwin does not maul me the same way that he mauled. Is that a keep your cool or is that a run away? Yeah. Are you trying to stay in the fight or are you trying to leave? I think I'm trying to leave. Then, yeah, that's a run away. Um, and since Buck is there distracting and being graphically ripped apart and May is there, can I have them help me? Yeah. Cool. I think May is, like, walking behind just, like, trying to grab at Vanessa's hair. May is kind of you. The May is the worst. Theo's still on there. And Buck is there being distracting. So that's going to be a plus one. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. I, was, I was going to say something about um, you having the binding. So you have to attempt this without you being able to cause physical harm. But yeah, a 13 will do it. Yeah. And also with running away, you're not causing physical harm. To yeah. Anything. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. So how do you how do you get out of Vanessa's grasp? And where are you going? Uh, I think May actually gets, like, a grip on her hair and just, like, yanks her away from me. And I, like, lift off and just kind of, like, fly backwards. And I'm looking at everything that's happening on stage. And we've got a snake person and we've got a ghoul ripping someone apart and an angry witch and a stag being built of ripped up body. (laughs) And I think I'm just going to, like, burst a hole in the ceiling and just fly out. Amazing. I think I'm just going to, like full like angels in america and just like rip a massive hole in the ceiling and as i'm leaving i'm just going to turn back with this like massive grin on my face and be like i think that was chaotic enough you know good old-fashioned bacchanal i'm gonna fly out i think we see like me transform from the like black leather dress into like a greek like black toga i turn back and like wink at the camera we can see in the like background below you, we can see um, like a bunch of the other students just running out of here. They're spilling out of this building. And I think uh, the way the ceiling gets ripped open is like a bunch of like uh, grapevines, which have been growing up the walls, just like grow up and like rip it open for me. Perfect. The imagery, I'm trying to go as classic Dionysus as possible because Diane Illyria Sass, Diane I Sass. Um, Boo, no, that's so good. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. So Dionysus is gone. Dionysus has left the building. Amazing. Okay. So let's go over to Edwin. Who was standing near Vanessa at this point? May. And Vanessa, are you still on the stage or have you gone elsewhere? I think I'm probably still on the stage. And at this point, I can turn to look after Edwin. Remind me what's happening around Edwin because I've lost track of that. Um, so first for Edwin, um, Vanessa, Vanessa just got attacked by May. 
Um, but also fairly close to her is Katarina, who is now looking a uh, very snake like. Okay. Um, and as for who is near Edwin, I mean, he just killed Buck, but uh, Theo has also just come down the ladder. So Theo is is like behind Edwin. I think we get the shot of like Edwin stepping up off of Buck and then turning to look at Vanessa and May. And I just start like very slowly lurching towards them. And I think I sh- need to roll keep my cool here. Yep. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so that's a five. As soon as I get close, I lurch towards Vanessa. Trying to grab a bite. Ooh, Vanessa, what do you do? Rip, rip. Oh, well, I have four strings here. Surely I can do something. And my intention is just to get the hell out of here. I think I'm beyond worrying about what happened to everyone else. I'm just trying to escape with my life. That sounds like running away. That sounds like running away a lot to me. Yes. So that is rolling with volatile. So I'm starting with a minus one to this, but I have four strings I can burn. Um, You can only only burn one at a time. Uh, Oh, I see. Okay, fingers crossed then. Eek! Strings aren't going to do anything there. Oof. Oh, man. Yikes. I know where this is going. Yeah, so I think you, you freeze up long enough that by the time you start to run away... Edwin has has grabbed grabbed hold of you. I think Edwin like opens his mouth wide and then just whispers like before he bites down. Let's see what's behind that door together. Oh, I oh, like it. Oh man. Okay, yeah. And so then then we fade to black and let's end with Purdue. Okay, so the next scene we see is Diane's cell phone, and you've been sending some messages with your friends. If you want, you can tell us a few of those messages. I think we see me like laying like in like a over the top canopy bed, eating a bunch of grapes and texting. And we see me like go to open the old group chat and then I like close it and start a new one with just May and Theo. Oof. Oh my god, what a party, right? And like get a bunch of like emoji explosions and like hearts back. Uh, and I'm like, where to next, kids? And then as the scene becomes dark and you see the the outside because the scene has become dark. In uh, outside in the garden, you can see a giant white stack just staring through the window. We turn the page and see the storyteller sitting once again at the dinner table. Just below him in the frame, we see the silver trays reflecting the rest of the room. The candles are burned mostly down, but he grins at the reader anyway, saying, This dance was a riot. It was fit for a queen. Or perhaps for a king, though that one's already been seen. Flesh torn asunder and bodies piled tall as the goddess flees from her bloody red hall. And the witch dies, we think, though perhaps time will tell, as the clock on the wall strikes its last midnight bell. Purdue is still creeping, in the garden he'll stay, and so I wish you a fond Valentine's Day. Spend time with your loved ones, you'll never know when. Edwin might just get hungry again. In the next panel, a shape appears in the doorway of the reflection on the tray. The storyteller stands and pulls out a chair for his guest, who sits. The next panel reveals Diane, her eyes still glowing gold. She winks at the reader, and the issue comes to an end. Moon Harbor Heroes is produced by Anthony Sheets and T.P. Huth, and edited by Anthony Sheets. Anthony can be found on Twitter at Icy New Year or at IcyNewYear.com. T is the host of Incubator On Air a new play podcast available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. She can be found at thuthplaywright on Twitter or tphuth94 on Instagram. This issue was GM by Elliot Peterson. She can be found on Twitter at Elliot Yelenton. Diane is played by T. Huth. Edwin is played by me, Anthony Sheets. Purdue is played by Simon Meskins. You can find him on Twitter as at Gilberecki. Vanessa is played by Ardent Dawn. The music for this issue was Classic Horror 1 by Kevin McLeod. A link to the license and his website will be in the show notes. Our logo was designed by Beautiful Beasties. She can be found on Instagram at beastly.doodles or on Patreon at patreon.com slash beautifulbeasties. If you want to get a hold of us, email us at moonharborheroes at gmail.com or on Twitter at moonharborcast. 
If you enjoyed this issue, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes and recommending it to friends. Word of mouth is really the best way for us to bring these stories to more people. If you'd like to support us financially, check us out on patreon.com slash moonharborheroes. Supporting us there will give you access to bonus episodes each month. And uh, thanks for helping us save the world. We'll see you next issue.